Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Corrupt to the core, entire FBI going down after Trump found their mole. It has been a couple of weeks of revelations as an intense battle of wills broke out between House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes, DCA, the Department of Justice, and the Mueller investigation concerning a cache of intelligence that Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein refuses to hand over in response to a subpoena, a request Rosenstein equated to nothing less than extortion. Information deemed so incredibly top secret that the DOJ refused to show Nunes on the grounds that it could risk lives by potentially exposing the source, a U.S. citizen who has provided intelligence to the CIA and FBI. The agency finally relented on Wednesday, allowing Nunes and Rep. Trey Gowdy, RSC, to receive a classified briefing. Then came the bombshell revelation via a disturbing op ed in The Wall Street Journal by Kimberly Strassel alleging the FBI had infiltrated the Trump campaign with a mole. A spy that Strassel believes she knows the identity of but will not publish at this time, she notes, I believe I know the name of the informant, but my intelligence sources did not provide it to me and refused to confirm it. It would, therefore, be irresponsible to publish it. So it is apparently time to play whack-a-mole with the big leagues in Washington, so let's go on a mole hunt. The Last Refuge notes in February that Trump campaign adviser Carter Page was working as an undercover employee, UCE for the FBI-helping the agency build a case against Yevgeny Baryakov. Then, seven months later, the FBI told a FISA court page was a spy. The Last Refuge notes in April 2017, writing a story about Carter Page, trying to enhance-affirm the Russian narrative, the New York Times outlined Page's connections to the Trump campaign. However, New York Times also references Page's prior connection to the Baryakov case. If you ignore the narrative, you discover the use one description as Carter Page? Oons Jack Posobiec took to Twitter to ask Page directly if the mole was him rather than simply speculate. Page in return replied, denying the charge, stating, But if what I'm hearing alleged is correct, it's a guy I know who splits most his time between inside the Beltway and in one of the other Five Eyes countries, adding and if so, it'd be typical, swamp creatures putting themselves first. Another person of significant interest is Stefan Halper. Halper is a foreign policy expert and Cambridge professor with connections to both the CIA and its British counterpart, MI6. Remember M16 is where Christopher Steele of the now infamous dossier had connections to as well. In February 2016, Halper set up a meeting between Trump campaign adviser George Papadopoulos and former Australian High Commissioner Alexander Downer. Downer is a known Clinton crony and his tip to Australian authorities that Papadopoulos knew of hacked emails which could potentially cause harm to Hillary Clinton was considered a major factor in the FBI's decision to launch its counterintelligence operation against the Trump campaign. According to the Daily Caller Halper also had several other contacts with Trump campaign officials as well, noting Halper's September 2016 outreach to Papadopoulos wasn't his only contact with Trump campaign members. The 73-year-old professor a veteran of three Republican administrations, met with two other campaign advisors. Also of note, The New York Post's Paul Sperry points out that Stefan Halper's Wikipedia page had been updated to include he has been exposed as a CIA and M-16 spy behind the FBI Russiagate investigations of the Trump campaign and as an informant to the Mueller Special Prosecutor investigation, an addition which was quickly deleted. Zero Hedge notes that perhaps Page and Halper are connected through London-based Hocklude & Company. Founded by three former British intelligence operatives in 1995 to provide the kind of otherwise inaccessible research for which select governments and Fortune 500 corporations pay huge sums. Interestingly, Alexander Downer has been on their advisory board for a decade, while Halper is connected to Hocklude through Jonathan Clark, with whom he has co-authored two books. You can find a June 2004 video of the pair discussing their first book here. HTTheMarketsWork.com Jonathan Clark is the U.S. Representative, Director U.S. Operations for Hocklude. Clark is a fairly public figure, but it was quite difficult to locate references to his association with Hocklude. Given the lengthy association between Halper and Clark, I expect we will find additional ties between Halper, other members of Hocklude and members of British intelligence. Halper's association with former MI6 head Richard Dearlove, via their previous positions at Cambridge Intelligence Seminar, is already known. It seems the rabbit hole is indeed a deep one. Posobiec's assessment on the FBI mole and on Hocklude and indeed on Halper's potential involvement is in short, Page got played. The Wall Street Journal again dares to publish an op-ed this time from a 33-year veteran of the FBI who upon his reflections of his own tenure at the Bureau and considering the debacle above, 
proclaims his shock at the utter and complete disrespect being shown to Congress currently. As Thomas Baker notes it truly is a change in culture. Baker states Dash. Last week we learned that some Republican members of Congress are considering articles of impeachment against Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein if he doesn't hand over certain Federal Bureau of Investigation documents. In January, House Speaker Paul Ryan had to threaten the Deputy Attorney General and FBI Director Christopher Wray with contempt to get them to comply with the House subpoena for documents about the Steele dossier. I spent 33 years in the FBI, including several working in the Office of Congressional and Public Affairs. The recent deterioration in the Bureau's relationship with Congress is shocking. It truly is a change in culture. Former Directors William Webster, 1978-87, and Louis Free, 1993-2001, insisted that the FBI respond promptly to any congressional request. In those days a congressional committee didn't need a subpoena to get information from the FBI. Yes, we were particularly responsive to the appropriations committees, which are key to the Bureau's funding. But my colleagues and I shared a general sense that responding to congressional requests was the right thing to do. The Bureau's leaders often reminded us of Congress's legitimate oversight role. This was particularly true of the so-called Gang of Eight, which was created by statute to ensure the existence of a secure vehicle through which congressional leaders could be briefed on the most sensitive counterintelligence or terrorism investigations. On August 27, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes asked the FBI to deliver certain documents immediately. The bulk of the documents weren't actually delivered until January 11. I can't imagine Mr. Webster or Mr. Free tolerating such a delay. One of the documents Mr. Nunes requested is the electronic communication believed to have initiated the counterintelligence investigation of Donald Trump in July 2016. The FBI had previously provided a redacted text of that communication, but the Intelligence Committee wanted to see more. On March 23 the Bureau essentially told the committee it wouldn't lift the redactions. There are legitimate reasons why the FBI would want certain portions of a sensitive document redacted, such as when information comes from a foreign partner. But there are ways around such difficulties. Select members of Congress have in the past been allowed to read highly sensitive documents under specific restrictions. Former FBI Director James Comey didn't even inform the Gang of Eight that the Bureau had opened a counterintelligence investigation into the campaign of a major party candidate for president. He testified on March 20, 2017 that he had kept Congress in the dark about the Trump investigation because he'd been advised to do so by his assistant director of counterintelligence, due to the sensitivity of the matter. The Gang of Eight exists for precisely this purpose. Not using it is inexplicable. This isn't the way a law enforcement agency should behave under our system of separation of powers. Attorney General Jeff Sessions must push Mr. Ray to get the FBI's relationship with Congress back on track. It won't be easy but the American people deserve it and the Constitution demands it. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.